Hello everyone. Uh, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about how to calculate the standard uncertainty um, of a value that you're deriving from a calibration curve. So you may see this in your textbook as u sub x. Um, older versions of the textbook use s sub x. I think my brain is stuck on s sub x. So um, these are interchangeable. The, the equation is, that it's used to calculate them is the same. So uh, this equation is in your textbook. I believe it's equation 427, so it's in chapter 4. Uh, we're talking about calibration curves. And uh, I just want to go over all of the variables first that are in this equation. It's kind of a big equation. Uh, what I recommend doing is setting up an Excel document where you calculate this for uh, different variables. And so you can just set up the equation once um, and basically drag and fill in uh, answers to the equation. That'll t save you a lot of time. You don't have to calculate anything by hand. So uh, what we'll see in this equation is that we have the standard deviation in y. So um, s sub y, uh, you can calculate by hand. Your book tells you how to do that. But this is also a value you get uh, when you do Linist in Excel. Uh, it's one of the values in the six cell um, block that you get. Uh, you can also calculate the, or excuse me, m, or the slope, is also present in the equation. k, this is a number that's often confused with n. So k is the number of replicate measurements of the unknown. So if you are doing, um, make a calibration curve, and then you want to find the concentration of three samples, that are replicate measurements, so you do trial one, trial two, trial three of the th same sample, that k in that case would be three. So this is the number of replicate measurements of the unknown. n is the number of data points on a calibration curve. So if we look uh, here, say we have a calibration curve where we have one, two, three, uh, four, five, six, seven points along our calibration curve. N in that case would be seven. Um, and, okay, Y bar is the average of the Y values on the calibration curve. So that's going to be your signal, absorbance or peak area, or peak height, whatever it may be. So you actually take the average of these values to get y bar. <clears throat> um, we also see in our equation we have x sub i. These are the individual values of x on the calibration curve. And so this shows up here in this summation. So this is actually a, a, a large piece of the equation. Um, so you're going to take each individual measurement, or each individual concentration in this case, x sub i, and subtract from it the average x value. So you, you take the average of the concentration, that's your x bar, okay? And then each individual uh, value of the concentration, you subtract the average from for, for this piece of the equation. So once you have um, all of these variables determined, uh, if you have multiple measurements or replicate measurements for the unknown, the only value that will be changing for those three or four or five or whatever different measurements is y. And so y is equal to your measurement. So let's say we're, we're using this calibration curve and our measurement, we're going to measure uh, three times. And let's say we get 1,001, 1,020, and 999 for our three measurements. Okay, You're going to be able to calculate three different values of S sub X for each of these measurements. Okay, And that's because you're changing this value of Y in those three different times. This is why it's nice to set up an Excel spreadsheet so you don't have to go back and do all of this calculation by hand because that's pretty awful. So um, that's how you do the uncertainty in X, or this, uh, 
standard uncertainty in x from a calibration curve. Now you may be asking yourself, why don't we just figure out uh, y equals mx plus b. We figure out the error in the slope, we figure out the error in the intercept. Why don't we just propagate the error as we normally do with addition and subtraction rules and all of that? Well, that doesn't actually account for the fact that the deviations get larger as you move away from the center point of a calibration curve. So here in this figure, which I have stolen uh, from a really nice um, document that I found online, find the, I'll find the uh, reference for this for you and, and send it your way. Actually, here's um, preparation of calibration curves. A guide to pr best practice that was prepared by Vicki Barwick, and it's com it comes from a company called Valid Analytical Measurement. Okay, so I just don't want want you to think that I made this figure. I did not. Um, in any case, so in this figure we have instrument response on Y, so that could be your signal, absorption, area, whatever, and we have concentration on X, uh, this is in parts per million, doesn't necessarily matter what the concentration units are, but um, what this is showing you, th these red dots represent uh, the uh, seven different points along the calibration curve, okay? The line that is shown in the middle, this line, is the best fit. Okay, so they've gone through, perhaps done a linest, fit that, uh, and came up with this best fit line. What is being shown then uh, as with this curve line at the top and curve line at the bottom is the error in x. So you'll see that if we have a an unknown with a an instrument response of say 4 we can determine the concentration. That seems about right. Looks like this might be uh, that looks reasonable. So we'll determine the concentration on x. Okay, you do this mathematically, not using a graph. But what we'll get from this is that the error in this value, in terms of x, I'm going to use a different color here, is given by uh, the the uh, inner the lines that are going to be intersecting in, um, with with these unknown curves here. So this is basically a plot of s of x plus s of x minus s of x. Uh, if you were to propagate the error, you would, wouldn't get these curved features, you would get straight lines, okay? So if we look at maybe um, determining the concentration of something with a higher instrument response, higher signal, drop that down here, what we would see is that the error in X is actually much larger. Okay, so I'm trying to show that these lines are shorter here in the uh, towards the middle, and they're longer here towards the um, end, end of the calibration curve. And this is where we get into the issues of interpolation, where you determine the concentration uh, of a, a point that lies within your calibration curve, and extrapolation, where you determine a point that lies, the concentration of a point that lies outside of your calibration curve. There's a lot more error in the point that's outside of your calibration curve than one that's inside your calibration curve. And S sub X allows you to estimate that.